Hi there, and welcome to Studio SN, your place for card making, rubber stamping, and paper crafting tutorials. My name is Sarah Newman, and I'm so very glad you're here. Today I want to share a fun pressed backgrounds technique featuring watercolors as well as some gold embossing on here. And as I, I'm tilting my card, you can see not only, of course, the beautiful watercolor background, but also some hints of gold metallic embossing in here as well. It's a really easy process to do and a great way to create lots of fun and versatile backgrounds because, of course, everyone is going to be absolutely different, which is the fun part of it. Now, the watercolors that I'm working with are in a pen format, and these are from Tonic. These are the Nouveau Aqua Flow. And what you've got is a liquid watercolor in the barrel of the pen. And then you've also got a really nice tip on here, which means that you can get some detail coloring, as you can see that I've done here on the front. But you can also get some nice wash effects, and you can also use your craft sheet as your palette to do some fun background techniques, which is what we're going to do. So I'm going to move aside my card and I'm going to be working again onto my craft sheet. This is really important. I'm going to be using a piece of white textured cardstock and you could use a watercolor cardstock for this. This one is just kind of a, a sturdy painting cardstock with a little bit of texture on it. Of course, you can also use a smooth cardstock as well. Now the two colors that I'm working with are the lemon zest and also the fresh green. So what I'm gonna do is take off the cap of my lemon zest. Now when you get these, uh, before you use them for the first time, you will need to remove a little tiny green ring that will be in between the top of the pen and the barrel. So all you need to do is pull off that top piece, slide off the little green piece that you can then discard, and then pop this back on together. And that's just to prevent the pens from leaking as they're being transported. Now, I don't know if you can see quite so well on here. There is a little word that says press. It's embossed, so it's a little bit difficult to see on here. What you're going to do is do as it says and press the barrel of the pen. This is going to deposit more color, more paint, than you would normally use if you're simply painting in to color an image. So I'm just depositing some of this onto my craft sheet. So that was the lemon zest. I'll come back with the uh, fresh green and do the same. And as I'm depositing this down, I'm keeping the colors separate. I'm not mixing them together, but I am kind of spreading them out so that I get some sort of streaks and some blob, blobby bits on here as well. And then what I'm going to do is get that textured cardstock and I'm going to place it textured side down and I'm just going to pop it right down into that color, kind of tap it. You can slide the cardstock, you can swirl it around, you can do whatever you like. I like it just pressed down because I think you can still get some really fun and interesting patterns. I don't want to completely co cover the white. I want some of that still showing, but if I wanted to get some more color, I can just come back and repress in some areas and get as much color on here as I want. So this is a really simple background and you could do as many of these as you wanted and you would get a completely different look every time. Now what I need to do is sort of mop this up. Of course in real life I would continue to use some of that till I'm done with my cardstock. And then I just need to let this piece dry. This is really important. I can heat set it to speed up the drying time, but before I move on to the next step I want it thoroughly, thoroughly dry. So I have a piece that is already dry. And you can see, of course, how different this looks, even though I use the same technique. Now I'm going to add my embossing. So I need to have my embossing ink pad, and I also need to have my embossing powder. And both of these, um, in this case, are from Altenew, the embossing ink. And then I'm using the rose gold embossing powder on here as well. I need to have a brayer on hand and a folded piece of scrap paper to catch my excess embossing powder. So what I'm going to do here is just run the brayer across the embossing ink pad and I want to get a complete rotation of the brayer. So I want to make sure that that whole brayer is coated. And then I'm going to roll the embossing ink onto my cardstock. And then what I'm going to do is quickly put this into the folded piece of scrap paper. 
take my embossing powder and just sprinkle that on there. And then tap off the excess. I want to come back and add a little bit more. And you can see where that embossing powder has clung. Now, if you have any lines, like you can see I've got a line on here. Usually I don't mind those, but if you do or if you found that you got too much embossing powder, you can come back with a dry brush and just kind of scuffle off any excess. Maybe avoid some of those straight lines on there. Tap off that excess, and of course you'd use your folded piece of cardstock or folded piece of paper to funnel your embossing powder back into the jar. And then what you're going to do is simply heat set this. So I'm going to grab my embossing tool and come in and set this embossing powder. Now my embossing powder has all melted and I have a really pretty shiny abstract background. And I love the way this looks with the watercolor on here too. Now the last step I always like to do when I have an embossed background like this is to come back with a brush and just kind of brush to make sure that I've got all of these particles melted or off of the cardstock itself just so that I don't have little stray bits of embossing powder going everywhere. So now that my background has been completed, I can start looking at the rest of the card. And as you can see, the focal element is a little bit of watercolor with a stamped and embossed image, as well as a little bit more watercolor just to fill in that beautiful stamped motif. So what I'm going to do is once again, bring in my kind of textured cardstock, and I'm going to create a, a place for my stamped focal. And I'm coming in with this beautiful lemon zest and I'm going to hold the pen at a bit of an angle. Now before I was pressing on the barrel, this time I am not pressing on the barrel, I'm just holding it. And I'm allowing that watercolor paint to just flow out. It will come out without you pressing on it. And pressing is really if you want to get a nice big puddle to be working on with your background techniques. So here I've got my yellow background area and then I just need to once again let that dry and I can come back and stamp and heat emboss my card focal and as you can see I've got one here already ready to go. Now the stamp that I'm working with is one from a set designed by my friend Julie Hickey and this is the Garden Treasures collection. I love this one because it's got some really nice sentiments which I also used on the card but it has some really nice, simple, very sweet botanical motifs. And of course, you've always got, with Julie, some great inspiration on the back of the package here. So I'm just using this one very simple little leaf motif. And I'm going to come back in with my fresh green. Now, because I've got a nice tip on the watercolor pens, I can just come in and add the very tiniest touch of that watercolor. And because I have this heat embossed, it's going to hold in the color. The raised edges of the embossing will hold in that watery medium. And once again, I'm not squeezing the barrel of the watercolor pen. I'm just letting it flow. And as you can see, I'm able to get a really beautiful and very detailed effect on here. And so then again, just need to let that dry and then I can come back and assemble the rest of the card. So as you can see, I've got my um, painted and brayered background on here, and then I've also got my card focal mounted up on a little bit of foam tape, just so I've got some dimension. Here's one of the stamped and embossed sentiments from the same Julie Hickey stamp set, and a little bit of sheer ribbon. So it's a very, very simple card layout. And as you can see, you can use any of the different colors of watercolors to create completely different looks. And in fact, I got to playing with these watercolors and I found that there were just so many looks that you can get. Now this is one that I got with a beautiful green and purple combination. I like how that looks really sort of free flowing. There's also the turquoise and the red together. And with this one, I put a little bit of that gold embossing powder on top, which I think looks really cool. You can go all the way to the edges of the cardstock or keep things in the center. You can go with a combination of colors, or you could even go with just a single color. So lots of different effects that you can get. They'll all depend on the amount of 
um, paint that you're working with and the amount of pressure and how much you are going back and dipping into those puddles of paint on your craft sheet. So this is how you can create a simple pressed background using your watercolors and some embossing powder. And thank you so much for joining me today on Studio SN. If you enjoyed today's show, please subscribe to Studio SN on YouTube and I'll keep you updated on the very latest stamping and card making videos. In the meantime, please feel free to learn more about paper crafting techniques on my website, sarahnewman.com. Thanks again, and I will see you next week.